to Talk Bowling, episode 127. I'm Dustin Seymour. I'm Tony Rucco. Talk Bowling is proud to be bringing you the latest information from the bowling industry, bowling tips, and updates on the largest internet bowling website, BowlingBall.com. That's right. Well, welcome and back. Yes, we're wearing the Thanks same Thanks for clothes. joining us. Um, yeah, we, we just like these shirts. Gators won last night at basketball, so I'm sporting it. College basketball? Yeah, man. Come on. All right. Let's go. All right. Go Gators. All right, I'll let you start this one. <laughs> All right, question from YouTube uh, from 01 Silverado LT. I guess I know what he drives. Hi, guys. I bought a no rules from you guys last month and just got it drilled today. Just need a little advice. At the beginning, I was sticking in the ball, causing a loft. Got it sanded out a little, bowled good until the end of the third game when my fingers, mostly my thumb, was swelling up and had two shots that went way up in the air and another where it didn't come off at all and almost did a Josh Blanchard. After that, I got timid and worried about it happening again, so I didn't bowl well. So basically went from 245 third game to 130. After getting sanded again, it never felt right and was inconsistent between sticking and dropping it. What do I do? Well, Josh Blanchard, that's I mean, wrong. You know, the, the guy owned it. You know, he, he slipped on the lane. <laughs> it's funny, that whole question, and we both it's go like, right to the like Josh Munson. Blanchard. It's like Roy Munson. <laughs> the poor guy. Yeah, Munson. Yeah, All right, wrong. well, I won't hold it against you, Silver Iowa no, team. No, but I mean, really, that's what you think of now. Almost. I've, I've Josh Blanchard a few times in my I life. didn't know he had coined the whole, like, I didn't know. Well, I'm glad he took, I'm glad he didn't name it after me, because I'm known for that. And bit, over bit the line. twice in really big like situations, yeah. But I held onto the ball, so it's okay. I had never done that. No, I don't think I would be able to walk afterwards. I have very frail bones. Maybe someday we'll tell those stories, but uh, mm-hmm. not today. He was probably he was probably intoxicated. I uh, know I was in high school. Um, Dude, like that matters. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so yeah. Yeah, I would say um, okay when you first get a ball drilled. The thumb hole has not smoothed out. Your oils from your thumb right. haven't gotten into the thumb. And a lot of times people will just go ahead and say, I need my thumb opened up. And I think you're at the point now where the thumb is too big. So you're having to squeeze. It really causes inconsistencies with getting your thumb out of the ball. Sometimes it will drop, sometimes yeah. it will stick, depending on that or your thumb just is too big. It's one or the other. Um, yeah. First thing I would say is to put some tape in the ball, try to snug it up and see if that helps you hang on to it a little better and, and have a little bit cleaner of a release. Um, but my thought is it's probably too big now. It's probably right. I'll make a shameless turbo plug for my people who turbo grips. Um, I would go to switch grip and I would drill multiple ones. It sounds like you swell enough that tape may help. You can go, you know, just transition through the tape as the night goes on or you can just have your pro shop drill you a switch grip that fits you at the beginning of the night, and then as you start to swell, go back in and have them fit you up for another switch grip, make them different colors, do whatever you got to do, and as the night goes, you can just, you know, go transition through those sleeves. That's part of the reason switch grip came about. I mean, obviously, to give you the same feel from ball to ball, but uh, it also so you can adjust the thumb slug itself. So if you don't want to use tape or don't like using tape, try that. Um, you can also try protecting tape. Uh, if you notice on our ball videos, I tape almost my entire thumb, which it doesn't stop the swelling, but it allows me to keep the thumb hole tighter and I can still get out of it. So if you get it where it's feeling good in the first game um, and it gets progressively tighter as the night goes on, having that protecting tape on your thumb or release tape, whatever you try and use, uh, may help you get out of it clean. So you can try a few things. And one thing you can also do, this is something I would do if, uh, you know, you get to the ball and alley and your thumb's really swollen and you need it. This was before switch grip, but you can actually take a napkin and put your fingers in the ball, lay the napkin over the thumb hole, stick your thumb in with the napkin, hold it there for like a minute, and the swelling will go down in your thumb. That's so old school. It funny. is, but I mean, like if during, let's say you don't have switch grip, yeah, and you need the swelling to go down, that's one thing you can do too. Yeah, you can get your thumb to go down. Yeah. So try that. Try tape, maybe switch grip, a napkin, protecting tape. 
You need to get the thumb right, though, because if it's too big now, you, you're going to have issues in the first game or two. So. But yeah, switch grip. I, I don't think I could do bowl without it. Yeah. Be with you. No, I don't think so. Yeah. It's nice. All right. Thanks. Good question. And bash on Josh Blanchard. <laughs> That's all right. We like you, Josh. <laughs> I feel your pain. Uh, question from Facebook. Tony and Dustin, what bowling shoes do you currently use, and what are your favorite <laughs> shoes you've ever had? All right. You want me to go first? Yeah. Well, I currently use Pyramid HPXs. Um, shameless plug for Pyramid. Uh, but that's just because Pyramid's kind of, you know, my little baby. So um, I use Pyramid HPXs. My favorite shoes I've ever had, outside of those, I was a big fan of the SST5 that was kind of like a club footed shape. It kind of looks like the SST 6LZ, like it was kind of a little club footy. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And they were all, they were jet black, the leather was super soft. I think I still have them in my office, but like they're totally torn apart. I used them for years. Uh, but these HPXs are pretty comfortable. They're, you know, a TPU footbed, so it's really soft, it's very comfortable. Uh, but I, those SS, I think they were SST 5s. I don't think they had a letter after them. They were kind of goofy looking, but they were super comfortable. And they were pretty stealth looking. Nice. Um, I currently use the Dexter SST6. LZ? No, it's the older ones, actually. Oh. They're, these things are tanks. I mean, I I drag my toe on my right foot. And mm. uh, I've had these probably three years, four years, and there's like no wear on the bottom yeah. of my right foot. They're nice. Um, my favorite shoes of all time are the Dexter SST4. Maybe it was the five. Black patent leather with those are fours with a silver yes. toe and silver heel. Gaudy but awesome. Yeah, back in the '90s, Dexter made like they were getting crazy because I had those like brown alligator with the gold. Remember those? Florida State colors never. Yeah, I don't associate to colleges. Some black and co copper ones that were cool. Yeah, yeah. I think I had. I might have had. They had like patent leather blue and. They silver. They had all kinds. Yeah, patent yeah. leather blue and silver. Keith has this hideous pair of like mustard and forest green, oh, yeah, but yeah. he loved them because they were suede. Yeah, so there's been some cool shoes. Um, I had some green and black ones. Yeah, yeah. Mostly. Like they would stuff. never make shoes that. Color. When I was really young, like my first pair of performance shoes were the purple and teal Lens <laughs> special editions. I used to think those were awesome. And I thought I was the coolest thing in the world yeah. with those shoes. Like they were purple, but I didn't care because I was like twelve no, they were, and they were cool back then. Yeah, yeah. I slid all over the place in those I think things. We're showing our age, which you're older than me, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Doesn't look it though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> showing our age. I mean, we're not old, but... Well, I mean, SSTs were not technically around when I started bowling. Yeah, me neither. SST1s. They didn't Let's just say reactive balls were well out before I started bowling. Mm, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, good question. Take a stroll down memory lane with That's us. That's right. All right, so upcoming <laughs> releases. Uh, February 7th, Brunswick True Nirvana and Fanatic SS. Are we sure it's the 7th? That seems really quick. I just thought of that. I'm pretty sure it's Okay, seven. we'll go with the seventh. Check out bowlingball.com. It might <laughs> be right, it might be wrong. Because everyone needs another Nirvana and Fanatic SS. Absolutely. So, get on them. It is a Pearl Nirvana, though, which is pretty cool. There you go. Been waiting for that one. Um, on 214, we have the Storm Timeless, the Belmo Ball, and the Torrent. Uh, the Hammer Gauntlet as well. Columbia Tyrant Pearl. Track Kinetic Emerald. There you go. And we threw the gauntlet last week. Dustin wasn't there. We had another guy jump in, but oh my god, that ball hooks. Oh, but everyone needs like ridiculous, ridiculous hook. Now, Maybe one bowling, game. Man. Maybe well, one game is all I could use it for. If you're bowling tournament sport shots. I mean, it hooks. Go to national. Uh, and on March seventh, Ebonite Maverick Pearl. So look for that one too. It's a good one. All right, contests. We give a bowling ball away each week on bowlingball.com. Just click the 52 weeks, 52 winners image on the right side of the page to register. And you do have to sign up each week because it resets. 
You can also head over to bowlingboards.com. They give away a ball each week. Uh, just go over, register, make at least one post per week to be entered. And you can also check them out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash bowling boards. Same contest going on there. And Pyramid Bowling also has weekly giveaways on their Facebook page. And that is facebook.com forward slash pyramid bowling. Make sure to check that out. And remember, all contests do reset each week, so sign up each week. I just saw it. Hand me that monster tape. I want to show everyone the cool logo on the monster tape. You probably can't see this because I'm not going to get up and zoom it in. Maybe Dustin can throw a little picture of it in there. Anyway, it's pretty cool. Uh, Bowlingball.com brand tape. We have white, black rolls, packs, but you only get the awesome logo in the pack. The roll is kind of generic, but it's a cool logo. Yeah. Maybe you can zoom that can in. Is it? Probably not. <laughs> that tried to get well. it. Tried yeah. To get <laughs> yeah, that worked out Just really good. Just pause it right at that moment and you'll see it. Why don't you throw that workout tool at the camera next? <laughs> <laughs> see what Listen, else I, have, I have such accuracy, it didn't even come <laughs> close to the that camera. That was horrible. You should see where it landed. It's right in front of the camera, actually <laughs> sitting up. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, contact us for more questions so we don't sit here and throw tape at you <laughs> for the whole time. Uh, email us, questions at talkbowling.com, facebook.com forward slash talkbowling, <laughs> twitter <laughs> at talkbowling, uh, or you can leave a comment on any episode of Talk Bowling on talkbowling.com. <laughs> oh, bowlingball.com, great ball. <laughs> Microfiber fits nicely in your hand. Put that right there. It does. <laughs> Stop looking what, over there. What else can we show? All um, right. <laughs> all right. Last week's random question of the week. I'll just let you take this. Just thing. finish it off. <laughs> finish it off. You just you look at accessories. Uh, who holds the record for most consecutive gutter balls thrown during a sanctioned league, and how many was it? <laughs> it's not me, thankfully. <laughs> um. <laughs> I just read ahead. Okay, go ahead. Uh, on September 7th, 1971, Richard Caplet threw 19 straight gutter balls in <laughs> Danielson, Connecticut. I, okay, I knew, I had the score written down. I think it was <laughs> 7 or, or 13 or something like that. Maybe 33. It was very low. And it wasn't over. It wasn't all in one game, so he didn't bowl a zero, thankfully. Well, that wouldn't be one game, though, would it? No, that wouldn't be one game. Oh wait, hold on. No, in san- during a sanctioned league, how many? Yeah, but right? nineteen straight wouldn't be a full game anyway. It'd take twenty straight. Oh right, 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 zero. right, right. So like it, it ended one game and started the next, or was it like the I'm front hoping nineteen? I, I'm, hope, I'm hoping he had the front nineteen <laughs> and, and then three like, seven. clip three or something. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry. You Richard. should get if you throw twenty straight gutter balls, you should get a ring. Like legit. Like legit. Gotcha. Okay. (laughs) Wow. All right. This week's question of the week. What branch of the U.S. military issued a unit patch that featured a bowling ball knocking down pins? Hmm. We're getting obscure right here. This is getting random. All right. Well, think about that one. And in closing, please remember that BowlingBall.com is free shipping on every item every day. No hidden handling fees, no packaging fees, no added insurance fees, no minimum purchase. The price shown is the price you pay at checkout. BowlingBall.com. It's where bowlers go. So. <laughs>